Oh, this is weird. <laughs> First time I've ever done this. I actually have no idea where I can set this. There we go. Stay. I'm going to work on getting some rigs set up for this weekend while people trickle in here. What's up, Oregon Fishing? Do I do any yak fishing? Not yet. I want to get a kayak eventually. Uh, I'm waiting to hear back from Christian to see if we're going to fish a pond tomorrow. If I don't hear back from him, I'll get a hold of you. Might do some smallmouth if we can't fish this pond. Uh, where did I put jigs? Right here. That <laughs> should have been here. I'm going to work in an hour and a half. <laughs> I'll wait till we get some more people in here before I start talking about the serious stuff. Well, not, not too serious, just the reason I made the stream. Just got one hitting up as many spots as in Coos County as possible. Awesome, man. Now, there are so many places around here that if I had a kayak, yeah, I'd never be home. So it's probably better I don't have a kayak. At least right now. So I'll probably give it another uh, another five minutes before I start talking the serious stuff. Where the comment went. First time here, man. Like your videos. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. <laughs> So, just in the meantime, place I'm planning to fish this weekend is going to be weedy as hell. So, so, I'm getting rigged up. I'm picking weedless stuff. I already got some rods rigged up with some of the weedless stuff. I'll show you what I got going for this weekend. So, I'm, I'm one way or another, I'm fishing a spot that is just a snag nightmare. It's either going to be a pond that's close to a buddy's place that takes like a 20 minute hike to get there and it's weedy as heck or another one is a place where it's on the Willamette River and there's just tons of logs, tons of branches, tons of stuff to snag on. I've already lost probably $50 worth of gear fishing that spot. So no exposed hooks, weedless stuff. Thinking about taking a swim bait. Come on, tail. Yeah, five inch rage tail on a, I think that's a one eighth ounce weighted swim bait hook. Chatterbait. Only thing I'm going to take weedless because, I mean, her take. That has an exposed hook because chatterbaits are still pretty pretty weedless by design. And then I got a craw trailer on that. Frog because yes. Yeah, try a new weightless jerk bait I've never used. This is from Strike King, and it's in the baby bass color. 
And then on the finesse rod, I'm thinking a small jig with a swim bait trailer. All right, so two more minutes before I get serious. Oh, I suppose I'll show you guys. Yeah, thinking something like that. Sort of, it sort of mimics the color of the bait fish in any of the places I might be fishing this weekend. Sort of like a like somewhere between a crappie and a bluegill. We'll see how this works. Oh, <sighs> jig looks good. Yep. Yeah, I went to Waverly a couple months ago, and this was the only thing that was getting bit. Didn't hook anything, but... All right, so get this rod sleeve back on, and... We'll start getting into the nitty gritty of why I wanted to live stream today. Oh. No, I don't think I'm going to take a Texas rig. I'll just lose a tungsten if I do that. All right, so you guys have probably noticed my upload rate has declined severely. I haven't uploaded anywhere near as many videos as I've wanted to this last uh, summer. I mean, normally in the summer, that's when I want my video rate to ramp up and upload at least uh, two, three videos a week. I've been hard pressed to get two, three videos a month in during the summer. There's actually a couple reasons for that. So, reason for this live stream, kind of wanted to explain the absence, why I was gone for almost three months, but also why the video rate has been going down. Uh, number one and most important thing is family, is spending more time with my family. My daughter, she's almost a year and a half old. She's really learning, like, who people are and trying to establish what they mean to them. So, I want to be here for, for that. And... Uh, there's, there's times where fishing almost got in the way, and I'm actually really glad it didn't get in the way. Like, stuff happened where I had to come home, and if it didn't happen, I would I would have missed her first steps. And she's starting to, like, understand, you know, this is, this is dad, dad. This is, like, one of the most important people in my life, and she gets real sad when I leave for work, at least when she's asleep, or when she's awake. She's taking a nap right now. That's why I'm doing this video out in the shop, so she can't hear me. But spending more time with my family on the weekends. Uh, last couple of weeks have been like birthday season for my family. I, well, my, it was my first cousin's birthday last weekend. It's my nephew's birthday this weekend. I'm going to go fishing this weekend one way or another. I don't know if it's going to be Sunday. don't know if it's going to be tomorrow. I'm hoping for tomorrow night. But yeah, that's the, num that's the number one reason is uh, being here for... Sophia just helping along with her development and also just, you know, as she's, as she's like I said, she's getting older, understanding who people are, wanting to uh, help with that and just grow that with her, bond with her. Uh, number two reason, if you guys couldn't tell, because this is Oregon, we've actually, we've actually had the seasonal cliff come the earliest I can remember. So I always, if you guys have followed my channel for a couple of years, I talk about this thing called the seasonal cliff here in Oregon. It usually happens sometime in mid to late October when it just like pond fishing just absolutely dies off. And that's when, you know, here in, here in the Willamette Valley, for the most part, bass fishing, pan fishing, rest in peace. Oh, let me read a couple comments here. New drinking game for me then every time you take a drink of water, I'm gonna take a drink of beer for you. Do it. <laughs> Bring back the other comment. Feel you, bro. That's exactly why I haven't been posting videos. Oh yeah, yeah. You told you told me that, you know, 
your your baby's getting older too. <laughs> yeah, it dad dad comes dadding comes first. Dadding comes before fishing. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we hit the seasonal cliff like the first week of September, and it just it it hit me by surprise. It hit me like a wrecking ball. I had all my stuff rigged up for a couple of bass trips. Yeah, yeah, for sure, Justin. Uh, had stuff rigged up for bass fishing, had stuff rigged up for pan fishing, and just <laughs> seasonal cliff happened. So had to hard switch over some stuff to salmon steelhead because coming up here, well, I mean, it already is almost that case where it's not really worth fishing for anything other than salmon steelhead. Maybe some sturgeon. I'm going to try to do some sturgeon fishing sometime this month too. And here's a drink of beer for you. But uh, but yeah, everything I had planned, everything I had available for me just absolutely changed overnight. And we had a really long streak of storms. Our storm season came early this year also. And the thunderstorms, I'm not going to fish in that, especially with these things. Yeah, I'm not going to go stand out in a lightning storm holding a bunch of lightning rods. But uh, so that that's another reason is the hard change in the weather had to... <laughs> had to change everything over from what I was planning to do. So everything that I had set up and planned, my backlog of fishing videos I wanted to make, because like like I've said before, plenty of times on this channel, I want to keep fishing seasonally relevant. I want to teach you guys seasonally relevant fishing information. So when things change that hard, I, 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 I need to like adjust, need to get stuff set up how I should be fishing based on now, not how I want to fish. Third reason why my video rate has severely declined, and this is the more serious one, is about a month ago, this is actually the start of my absence. About a month ago, I had a pretty serious health scare. And I mean, it's it's one of the reasons why, you know, you guys, you guys can't tell guys that, you know, you've, you've seen before, I've lost quite a bit of weight in the last couple of weeks because I've had to. Uh, one of the things I had to get under control is my blood pressure. I'm doing fine. I don't want to worry anyone. I'm doing good. I, I feel good. I, I feel like uh, probably 70%, which <laughs> when this whole healthcare started, it was really bad. So I have not kept it a secret on this channel, not kept a secret to anyone that I have a world-class digestive system. And I say that with every ounce of sarcasm that's in me. I have acid reflux, I have a hiatal hernia, I have IBS, I have a family history of some other things that I haven't been diagnosed yet, but there have been symptoms of those things there. It's just things haven't gotten to a point where they're going to officially say, all right, now we have to begin treatment for this. And it sucks trying to live around that stuff. And I had, so I, I should preface this first by saying that I used to be a first responder at the Target Distribution Center. And... Uh, one of the things that they train you to do when you work there as a first responder is to recognize the symptoms of a heart attack. And some of the worst things along with that is the esophagus and the heart share the same nerve cluster. That's why heartburn can mimic heart attack, heart attack can mimic heartburn. It gets to a point where the only way to know for sure is to go in and get an EKG done, to get blood work done to see if you are actually having a heart attack because there are specific proteins that appear in the blood during a heart attack that tell, that tell uh, doctors that your heart is under stress and you're having an actual heart attack. And I had, over the course of the day, I had chest pain and it was difficult to breathe. Uh, I started getting heart palpitations uh, near the end of the day and started getting real dizzy. And then when I came home, I just uh, sat down in my chair, uh, ate, ate some dinner. It was going to be like another two hours or so before I went to bed. Ate some dinner and just out of nowhere, my heart just starts pounding and I can feel it through my whole body. Like I could feel it in my feet. And I just suddenly got so dizzy, I thought I was going to pass out. And that's when I went okay, it's gotten serious, I need to go to the ER. So that's what I did, went to the ER, and um, I, one, so I don't know if this is a good thing, but one of the reasons why they loved my visit is because I told them I'm a, first, I'm a former first responder, I know the whole deal, you know, it, it, it just went, it went by smooth. It, it, 
it ran like melted butter. <laughs> me getting checked in, me getting hooked up and everything to the EKG, getting the lab work done, all that. Um, was there for about an hour and they came back and they gave me some stuff for my, for my esophagus, which told me, okay, I am just having heartburn bad enough that it's mimicking every single symptom of a heart attack. Don't know what the heart palpitations were about that, but yeah, it, it, it did help. They gave me some stuff that numbed my esophagus. They gave me some stuff that reduced the acid. So I was out of there in two hours. Reason I was there for another hour is because they, they thought I had something else that like when I followed up with my doctor ended up being absolutely nothing. He was kind of, he was kind of mad that the ER did that. But what followed after that was the health scare was so my my stomach issues that I've had for a really long time have taken a serious turn for the worse and where there might actually be some esophageal damage that has happened. And that's the thing you have to be the most worried about if you have acid reflux is the esophageal damage. So I've had to change my lifestyle because of that. Like I just, I, you know, understanding stuff already from living with this for a really long time, talking with my doctor, I've had to change uh, diet, I've had to change exercise, I've had to change activity is another thing. And I went bass fishing about a week after this whole thing happened and it took me out for a week. I never had that before where it was like everything in me hurt from the strain of hauling, you know, 40 pounds of bass gear. And then, I mean, that's one of the reasons why I switched these rods is because of how light they are. But I mean, hauling around the fishing rods also and being out there for as long as I was. And then I took a break. I went salmon fishing. Uh, the same the same day I went uh, surf fishing and caught that huge surf perch out at uh, out in Lincoln City, I went salmon fishing at the mouth of the Siletz River uh, before that. And like that, I don't know what it was about fishing that point there, but I started getting that pain and started getting that like heart palpitation, started getting that dizziness. I took a break. I went, I went up to the Moe's and got some lunch. And then I was like, all right, I don't think I'm going to do this fishing anymore. I'm going to do some surf fishing. I felt fine during the surf fishing, but things have changed in my life. This whole thing in a nutshell, putting a bow on it. Things have changed in my life to where I will not be able to fish as much as I would like to as much as I should. And by should, I mean, my channel's blowing up. I mean, I, I talk with guys like uh, uh, Northwest Fishing, PDX Fishing, uh, Boneyard Bass, and they're all buddies of mine. We talk all the time about our channels and like trying to help each other grow. And we talk about how much my channel's been blowing up. And you know, this, this is the time, like I said, things ramp up, things kind of come to a peak and I want to get that going further and farther. I had a goal of hitting 3,000 subscribers by the end of the year, which at first I thought was insane. And, you know, thank you guys again, because I can't do this without you guys. But yeah, thinking I was going to hit 3,000 subscribers by the end of the year, pretty much scrapped that goal. But like I said, things have changed in my life. You know, one being at home is Sophia growing up. I want to spend more time with her. I want to be a dad more than I want to be a fisherman. I want to be a dad more than I want to be a YouTuber. I want to be a dad my whole life. And so this this is the time where I'm, you know, fulfilling a lifelong goal, a lifelong desire. And I'm completely happy with that. I'm completely at peace knowing that my channel, my, my upload rate will severely decline because of that. That's something I'm never going to be upset about. The one that is kind of upsetting is the health change, changing how much I can upload, how much I can fish. Like, you know, the stuff I have rigged up, I did not have line in the water for the last, like if I go fishing on Sunday, it will have been almost two and a half weeks since I've had line in the water. And that's the only upsetting thing is, you know, along with everything that's changed, I don't know if I'm going to go fishing and things are going to change while I'm fishing. The thing that scared me the most about that surf fishing trip was the fact that it's a two hour drive from home. And I started feeling that way. I'm like, what if what if things are different? What if this is actually, you know, the thing I don't want it to be? And I'm hours away from family. And that's that's another thing that's kind of played into this is I'm going to have to rethink things with fishing. Going to have to rethink um, distance I can go. Going to have to rethink 
um, planning, like, you know, maybe, maybe not traveling as much until Sophie is older and she can go with us and she's not, uh, she's not the baby that has to be corralled 100% of the time. She's actually, she'll be a little more independent. But she is so smart. She is so smart and careful. You know, I wish she was awake so I could show you guys, like, some of the stuff that she could do now. Like, uh... Like, I've, I've seen her fall a couple of times, and the way she falls, like, because I, I watch wrestling, I'm a huge wrestling fan, I'm going to an NXT show here in a couple weeks, Logan, what's up, man? Uh, going to an NXT show here in a couple weeks, and I, I know, because I've seen it so many times, a safe way to fall. Got some pretend, plenty of local spots we can go, dude, I, I'm telling you, next time, like, next time you're getting your channel up, or, if I can't help my channel, I'll help your channel, how about that? Um, but like, I know the safe way to fall and I've seen her fall safely that safe way. And like, no one's, no one's taught her that she just learned it on her own. And like the way she's like teaching herself how to walk and manipulate things. She's, I love her so much. She's, she's so smart. Totally understand brother. We miss you at the surf champion. Dude, I wanted to go to the surf championship. Let me know when you can, we can go make up for it. Absolutely. You know, hit, hit me up on Facebook, Instagram. I mean, you guys know where the links are. I'm going to get some more water. Follow me into the kitchen. I'm not peeing. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah um where was i Cha uh changing strategy with fishing and how i'm gonna continue on from here i'm gonna try to stay as local as i can with it one of the nice things about it being the the winter like it pretty much is winter right now. This is winter weather. We've had winter weather, not fall weather. We've had winter weather in Oregon for the last like two weeks or so. It's supposed to get get back up to 70 this weekend, which is why I'm going to take advantage of some pond fishing or maybe some river fishing for some smallmouth. But a lot of the fishing opportunities that are going to change in the winter, it's one of the blessings why this happened when it did. I'll just lay some more salmon this weekend. <sighs> <laughs> I want to go. It's been driving me nuts that I haven't gotten into it. I haven't hooked a salmon in almost two years, and it's been driving me nuts. I've gone, I've gone places, and I've seen salmon caught, but it, again, it's like you know, I you, you hear that you hear people talk about salmon having like people have the scent that repels salmon. I wonder if I have that scent because a buddy of mine, he's been absolutely killing it, going out on his own, and when we go fishing together, nothing. <laughs> But uh, uh, like I was saying, one of the blessings of it happening, like this whole thing with my health happening right now, uh, is with it being the winter, a lot of the, a lot of the fishing opportunities are going to turn local again. Uh, some of the salmon and steelhead spots that I am going to fish, it's going to be a pretty short drive from where I live. Trout stocking is going to come back uh, here probably, I think, I think the first stocking actually happens this weekend. Yeah, I'll have to like double check the stocking schedule uh, for like a place where I a place where I live. The first stock is going to happen here pretty soon, so trout fishing is going to come back. I mean, that's what I have <laughs> centered this channel on for a long time. Um, but then also like uh, a lot of my local river spots are going to start getting better again as the winter comes around. But also I have a whole bunch of new educational content that I've already been planning, uh, sort of like writing talking points and getting stuff to talk about for the winter when things kind of when things kind of ramp down fishing wise but i mean i spent this whole this whole year getting 100 percent ready for winter salmon winter steelhead fishing something that i haven't done ever and well I, i've done the fishing but i haven't been as prepared as i am now like the waders i have the gear i have specialized stuff um you know the stuff that i take with me now it's it's no longer like five spinners it's like 20 spinners. It's no longer like a, t a twitching jig. It's now like 10 twitching jigs. 
So a lot more, a lot better prepared for uh, winter fishing opportunities. And with you know things going the way they are with my health, like I said, I am improving. This thing, this this thing, it will pass. I I have I have the hope, I have the faith that this will pass. I'm doing the right things. I've you know like I showed you guys, I've lost weight. All my clothes are fitting better. I'm fitting in clothes I haven't fit in in like two years. <laughs> Last night, my pants kept falling off. I kept having to pull them back up at work. Uh, so it's things things are going to get better. Number one thing I had to get under control is my blood pressure. And I that that was probably from, you know, partially from being uh, – being working in a lab and not working at a distribution center like I used to, not being as active and work being cardio, but also the amount of coffee I was drinking at work. I don't do well just sitting in front of a computer. I kind of have to because of my back now. My body can't handle the work that I used to do, but I, <laughs> I've, I've, got, I've gotten better with that. I don't drink as much coffee. I do more cardio. I've, I've already dropped my blood pressure by 20 points since this whole ordeal began. Excuse me. But it's it's going to it's not going to last this this slump in content is not going to last. I'm going to get together with some other fishermen. Um I've got two guys that have offered to take me fishing to some spots that I've never gone before that I wanted to fish in a long time. Uh, don't know when that's going to happen. I know one one of my friends, his uh, his work schedule has gone absolutely bananas the last couple of months. So when he's got an opportunity to go fishing, we're going to get together. Uh, tomorrow, I, I contacted Christian to see if he wanted to go fish the pond by his house. And that'll be the largemouth fishing. If we can, if not, I'm going to go to the river, do some smallmouth fishing, you know, Oregon fishing. Let me know uh, what your schedule is going to be like this weekend. Also, we could probably get together because I'm going to be fishing this weekend one way or another. I want to fish. I'm going to have the opportunity to fish. Excuse me. Water. So that's that's the that's the gist of this. Uh, yeah, bro, I want to go fishing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, family open schedule. That's the number one thing, you know, like what I started this whole video talking about. Uh, yeah, um, that that's the gist of why I want to do this live stream. Just talk about. It. I I kept trying to like plan like doing like a sit down video and talk about. It, but I was like, you know what? I haven't live stream. I haven't chatted with viewers yet, and I've had this channel for three and a half years. Let's just let's just do a live stream and talk about it. It was it was, it was fun. It, it was it was a lot easier, a lot more laid back, a lot more my style. You guys get to hear my sort of like stream of consciousness talking about stuff like this. But uh, I'm going to finish getting ready for work here. I've been streaming for almost half an hour now. Uh, something else I wanted to say. Hang on. Cranial flatulence. I was just looking at something and it made me want to say something and now I can't remember. All right, anyway. So yeah, uh you know, this 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 season here it will pass, things will get better, the content rate will ramp back up. We'll get back to hammering the fish like we used to, hopefully. Uh oh, I just remembered. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I finally remembered. Uh Brain fart, yeah, cranial flatulence. Uh, another reason, like, why fishing has kind of declined for me is, I don't know what happened, but I've had this, like, <laughs> like, magnetism all of a sudden to profoundly rude people fishing with me. So, I mean, you guys, I, I, I told uh, PK and I told Jay the stuff that happened during the uh, fishing turn, what well, was going to be the fishing tournament at Cape Lookout, but you guys saw in the last surf fishing video I did, the people, just like the crowd of people that just kept following me fishing, no one knew me, no one knew, like, who I was, I had a YouTube channel, anything like that, it's just, the crowd of people that just, like, as soon as they see me with a fishing pole, they come, they go out of their way, come running up, have you caught anything? And you guys know my feelings about that, like, you know, before I even make my first cast, or like two casts in, but, uh, 
people getting in the way, like, you know, the kids that kept running behind me wanting to get in the shot. I kept having to like do this as I'm doing my outro, <laughs> trying to, you know, not be, not be rude to the kids, but just be like, you know, Hey, come on. I'm trying to, trying to work here. But, uh, like some of the stuff that's happened is like, I've like to the point where I had one guy, I was bass fishing, I was topwater fishing and I came at the perfect time. I mean, the wind was exactly how I wanted it for the area I was going to fish for top water for bass. And I went to a spot where bass fishing for top water, it's like easy fishing. And I get like seven casts in. I've already seen a couple blow ups. I missed one fish. This guy shows up in waders with one rod and a frog. He walks up and sees me, looks out to where I'm fishing, and then wades out into the water right in front of me. <laughs> and starts fishing and I'm fishing like one of the lures I was throwing at the time was was this big BBZ swim bait yeah that's a that's a two and a half ounce lure I started throwing that thing right beside him like making sure it landed right beside him and he kept going like I'm just like trying to give him the hint. Yeah, you literally just invaded my spot. Not like, hey, can I fish with you? Or like, can I fish by you? You literally are standing in the spot I was fishing, which means he scared everything away. Because I know the I know the layout of the water there. You're not gonna catch anything standing in that spot. Everything can see you, everything can smell you, even if you're you know in waders, they can see you, they can smell you. And he starts he starts like trying to act cool about it. Suddenly he starts going like, I I've, I've been seeing them jump all like all week. I'm like yeah, so have I. That's why I'm fishing here. And then, like, after a while, he, like, he recognizes me and realizes, you know, oh, that that guy has a YouTube channel. I've watched his videos. And he starts playing cool, and I, I left mad. I was so mad when I left. Like, I came home, and I, I almost broke a rule. I almost broke one of my rules. I almost threw my rods. <laughs> I came, came home. I'm like, set them down come inside but that was the day that Sophia took her first steps so you know it yeah it made me mad that you know profoundly rude people are making fishing difficult for me but if it didn't happen I would have missed Sophia's first step so like I said you know the reason why the fishing availability going down not making me as mad because of things like that but yeah I've I rambled a little bit there so I'm, I'm just gonna do what I said I'm gonna do I'm gonna start getting ready for work uh, thank you guys so much for tuning in. Thanks for chatting with me. It was fun. I want to do more of these. Um, you know, when I when I upload this or when it gets uploaded, you know, feel free to keep uh, keep uh, talking in the comments. I'll be chatting during work. Like I'll like every time I take a break, I'll open up my phone and answer some comments while I'm at work. But you know, thank you guys so much for watching. And as always, tips up, tight lines, and have fun fishing. Now, how do I turn the stream off? Oh, there it is. Later.